What's up guys, it's River, and today we're looking at the best Nikon cameras on the market. Not only are these great cameras, but they're also a fantastic value for your money. In this video, we're gonna look at cameras for every type of user, from a beginner camera to a high-end professional camera. So, make sure to watch this video all the way through because it is jam-packed with information. Let's get into it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with camera gear, plus teaching you guys how to take better photos and videos. So if you're into that kind of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll leave a link to all of the products that we talk about today in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Let's get into the video. So the first camera on the list is the Nikon D3500 and it is our beginner and entry level camera on the list. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C side sensor which is pretty standard in cameras. In terms of photos, it does five frames per second in 14 bit RAW which is pretty impressive for an entry level camera. Most entry level cameras do maybe 10, maybe 12 bit RAW but 14 bit RAW is the same as high end professional cameras. As for video, it does full HD up to 60 frames per second, which again, is not really something you find in most entry level cameras. And to be honest, considering the price and considering the fact that this is an entry level camera, it's got pretty impressive specs. As for autofocus, it's really, really, really good in photo mode. It is extremely fast and extremely reliable. When it comes to video, it's not really on the same level as a professional camera, but for most mid-level and entry level users, it will do just fine. For the most part, Nikon's really known for photos and video something that they've only recently started to focus on. However, there is one camera on this list that is phenomenal for video and I've actually used it on several music videos. As for the color science in the Nikon D3500 and most Nikon cameras, the color science tends to be very neutral. The photos out of Nikon cameras are all 14-bit raw so they can handle a ton of Photoshop and editing but straight out of the camera they're pretty neutral and nothing all that special. If you want a camera that looks good right out of the box with very little editing, I actually recommend looking into Fuji and Canon cameras. However, one thing that I should mention is that this camera is not very good in low light and does not really do too well over 1600 ISO. Again, it's an entry level camera and it's not really a camera that you can push super hard when it comes to ISO. And lastly, let's talk about the body and the physical design of this camera. I actually really enjoy the DSLR style type body. They feel really good in your hands, they're really robust, and they have a nice deep grip where honestly, it's just satisfying to hold. If you're somebody that wants that DSLR experience, you're going to love Nikon cameras. And the D3500 is no different. It's well built, robust, and feels great in your hands. However, the ergonomics in Nikon cameras I find are not as good as other cameras. They tend to take a little bit of learning. It's not a camera that I would expect beginners to struggle with. However, there is a tiny learning curve. But overall, the physical design, the build quality, and the buttons on this camera are fantastic. The only thing that I don't like about the Nikon D3500 is the fact that the screen on the back is fixed and is not adjustable. So if you're someone that tends to do a lot of high angle shot, low angle shots, or you simply wanna see yourself if you're shooting yourself, you will struggle. And sadly, this camera does not have an input for an external microphone. I think Nikon really sees this as a photo first camera, so they didn't really put one in. However, if you want a camera that's similar to the Nikon D3500, but you want all the bells and whistles that the Nikon D3500 is missing, the next camera might be perfect for you. And the next camera on the list is the Nikon D7500. This camera honestly has everything that the Nikon D3500 was missing. To start off with, the Nikon D7500 actually has a 20 megapixel APS-C size sensor. And you might be like, hold on, I'm missing four megapixels, but in this particular case, less megapixels are actually going to give you a cleaner image, and this camera will be better at higher ISOs than the D3500, so the four less megapixels are actually an advantage. And I promise you, when it comes to just purely resolution, you will not notice those four megapixels, but you will notice a cleaner image. As for photos, this camera is significantly faster at eight frames per second, with a 50 raw frame buffer. That means it can take 50 raw photos before it needs to stop or 100 JPEGs. You could easily use this camera for high-end professional work or fast-paced action work if you weren't ready to step up to a full-frame camera. As for video, it does full HD up to 60 frames per second, which is really nice to see. However, when it comes to 4K, it does 4K up to 30 frames per second, but it does all of that with a 1.5 times crop, which is a very significant crop. 
Basically, it will zoom in all of your lenses by 1.5, so your 35 becomes a 50. And it will definitely be harder to get wider shots if you go into 4K mode. And just like every other Nikon camera, the autofocus in photo mode is amazing. However, in video mode, it's just okay. The build quality and design of this camera is really top notch. If you're a professional, you're going to love the ergonomics on this camera. This camera is very easy to use and work with. And another thing that I really like on this camera is that they actually added an articulating screen on the back. So if you're trying to do low angle, high angle shots, it's going to be very easy to pull those off. Plus, this camera also has an input for an external microphone. Personally, I think this camera covers everything that the D3500 was missing, and it's only a few hundred dollars more. This camera would be great for someone that's an enthusiast or even someone that's looking to do professional work. This is one of my favorite cameras on this list. On top of that, I really do feel like this camera is an amazing value for the money you spend and the specs that you get. And if you are someone that's doing professional work or someone that's an enthusiast that wants to learn how to make money using your camera, I've got some really interesting information for you. Chances are you know me from my YouTube videos and know me as the guy that reviews cameras on YouTube, but what most people don't know is that I'm also a director and cinematographer that shoots music videos and commercials. I've actually worked with brands like Nike, Lululemon, Sephora, Canada Goose, and I've shot award-winning movies and music videos. And not only that, but I've actually helped dozens of my friends turn their casual interest in photography into a high-paying side hustle just using the camera that they already own or the one that they're about to buy. So it only made sense to show you guys here on YouTube how to start making a few thousand dollars a month, but only working part-time. So if you're interested, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to create a high-paying side hustle doing something that you enjoy. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you all the technical settings on your camera and dial in every single setting so that you can get the most out of your camera. And the second thing that I'm gonna do is share all of my creative secrets to show you how to get that high-end cinematic look that gets you high paying clients. But ultimately, the most important thing that I'm gonna show you is how to find and create relationships with high end clients without having to dedicate full time hours to it. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to check out my Side Hustle Pro course down below. It's the ultimate guide to turning your passion into a high paying side hustle. And on top of that, every single person that's watching this video, if you sign up through the link down below, specifically on this video, you actually get access to my free cinematic LUTs and my Lightroom presets right away. So make sure to check out the course down below and let's get back into the video. So for the second half of this video, I actually wanna talk about the high-end, full-frame professional cameras that Nikon offers. So the first camera is the Nikon D750 and this camera is not only a beast, but it is also an absolute steal. The D750 takes a lot of what the D7500 does but turbocharges it. So the D750 actually is a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. And because it's a full frame sensor with a lower megapixel count, this camera is actually spectacular in low light and does really well at high ISOs. So if you're somebody that works in challenging lighting condition or you simply want a full frame camera that has a very low signal to noise ratio, you're going to get extremely clean images out of this camera. If you're someone that shoots a lot of high fashion, a lot of in-studio product photography, this camera is exactly what you need. For photos, it does 6.5 frames per second, which is a tad bit slow, but don't worry, I have a recommendation for you. And for videos, it does full HD up to 60 frames per second. Sadly, there is no 4K in this camera. So if you're watching this video and thinking, wow, I really like the D750, but I want a little bit more horsepower, Fear not, I have you covered. For you guys, I actually recommend the Nikon Z6 Mark II. It actually does 14 frames per second and has the exact same sensor. And as for video, it does 120 frames per second in full HD. And this camera also does 4K up to 30 frames per second without a crop. And on top of that, this camera does have a rear articulating screen and an external input for a microphone. However, it is significantly more expensive. I don't know if this camera is really worth the extra money, Personally, once you have this camera fully kitted out, you're gonna spend something like $2,000 to $2,500, and at that price point, I really recommend getting something like the Canon R6 instead. But if you're someone that loves Nikon cameras and only wants to use Nikon, this is a great alternative if you want the specs of the D750, but with more horsepower. And the Z6 is also a mirrorless camera, and I find a lot of people, myself included, 
want to keep using the DSLR cell type body, especially when it comes to photos. The D750 is a DSLR cell type body and it's exactly what you would want from an Nikon camera. It has a rear articulating screen and an input for an external microphone. Personally, if you want to stick with the DSLR cell type body and you want to save a little bit of money, the D750 is a great buy. But if you want a little bit more horsepower, specifically in photo speed and video frame rates, and you're okay with a mirrorless style body, I really recommend the Nikon Z6 Mark II. And last but not least, let's talk about my favorite camera from Nikon, period. That is the Nikon D850. This is honestly my favorite Nikon camera because it's not only amazing at photos, but as someone that shoots mainly video, it's also a very, very good video camera. The Nikon D850 is a 45 megapixel full frame camera, which is literally double the resolution of the Z6 Mark II or the 750. Now this is a camera that I would only recommend to two types of people. Somebody that's doing high end professional work where they need to do a ton of editing to their photos or somebody that's a hardcore enthusiast and they just wanna show off to their friends. I'm definitely the second one. When it comes to photos, this camera does seven frames per second, which is a little bit slow in my opinion, but it has a 50 frame raw buffer and a hundred frame JPEG buffer, which means you can take either 50 raw photos or hundred JPEGs before this camera needs a break. And if you add a battery grip to this camera, which is definitely something a professional photographer would add anyways, this camera actually ends up shooting faster at nine frames per second. Plus this camera does have full HD up to 120 frames per second and 4K without any crop. The 4K in this camera is actually gorgeous. I've actually used this camera as a B camera with my RED camera, which is a $40,000 camera. And honestly, this camera looks great cut next to my RED camera. This is a camera that I would easily use for music videos and commercials, no problem. Despite this being a DSLR, whereas mirrorless cameras are much better for video, this is a great video camera. So if you're somebody that wants a DSLR specifically for photos and videos, this camera totally has you covered. And one thing that I have to add is that the Nikon D850 has really good autofocus for photos, but the autofocus for video is actually really, really decent. I'd give it like an 8.5 or even a nine out of 10. It does a really good job tracking subjects. And before you ask, there is a mirrorless version of almost the exact same camera, which is the Nikon Z7. In terms of horsepower, the two cameras are exactly the same when it comes to video frame rates. The only difference is that the Z7 can shoot 10 frames per second without needing a battery grip. In my opinion, most photographers will stick with the Nikon D850 for photos because they like the body style and most people prefer DSLR. But if you're somebody that does video, you may wanna think about using the mirrorless body simply because it's easier to do video with a smaller body. On top of that, the Z7 also has N-Log, which is Nikon's log format. And if you don't know what a log format is, it's simply a flat profile specifically used for video color grading. But in case I haven't said this enough, the D850 is honestly my favorite Nikon camera and it is probably my go-to Nikon camera. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you're somebody that wants to learn how to start using your camera to create a high paying side hustle, make sure to check out the Side Hustle Pro course in the link down below. And if you sign up through the link down below, you'll actually get my free cinematic LUTs and Lightroom presets absolutely free. So make sure to check that out. See you guys in the next video.